Rise up in splendor, Jerusalem. Your light has come. The glory of the Lord shines upon you. See, darkness covers the earth, and thick clouds cover the peoples. But upon you the Lord shines, and over you appears his glory. Nations shall walk by your light, and kings by your shining radiance. Raise your eyes and look about. They all gather and come to you. Your sons come from afar, and your daughters in the arms of their nurses. Then you shall be radiant at what you see. Your heart shall throb and overflow, for the riches of the sea shall be emptied out before you. The wealth of nations shall be brought to you. Caravans of camels shall fill you, dromedaries from Median and Ephah. All from Sheba shall come, bearing gold and frankincense, and proclaiming the praises of the Lord. The word of the Lord. with your judgment endow the king and with your justice the king's son he shall govern your people with justice and your afflicted ones with judgment Lord every nation on earth will adore you. Justice shall flower in his days, and profound peace till the moon be no more. May he rule from sea to sea, and from the river to the ends of the earth. Lord, every nation on earth will adore you. The kings of Tarshish and the isles shall offer gifts, and the kings of Arabia and Seba shall bring tribute. All kings shall pay him homage. All nations shall serve him. Lord, every nation on earth will adore you. For he shall rescue the poor when he cries out and the afflicted when he has no one to help him. He shall have pity for the lowly and the poor. The lives of the poor he shall save. Lord, every nation on earth will
A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Ephesians. Brothers and sisters, you have heard of the stewardship of God's grace that was given to me for your benefit, namely, that the mystery was made known to me by revelation. It was not made known to people in other generations as it has now been revealed to his holy apostles and prophets by the Spirit, that the Gentiles are co-heirs, members of the same body, and co-partners in the promise in Christ Jesus through the gospel. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, o Lord. When Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea in the days of King Herod, behold, Magi from the east arrived in Jerusalem, saying, Where is the newborn king of the Jews? We saw his star at its rising and have come to do him homage. When King Herod heard this, he was greatly troubled and all Jerusalem with him. Assembling all the chief priests and the scribes of the people, he inquired of them where the Christ was to be born. They said to him, In Bethlehem of Judea, for thus it has been written through the prophet. And you, Bethlehem, land of Judah, are by no means least among the rulers of Judah, since from you shall come a ruler who is the shepherd, my people Israel. Then Herod called the, the Magi secretly and ascertained from them the time of the star's appearance. He sent them to Bethlehem and said, Go and search diligently for the child, and when you have found him, bring me word that I, too, may go and do him homage. After their audience with the king, they set out. And behold, the star that they had seen in its rising preceded them until it came and stopped over the place where the child was. They were overjoyed at seeing the star, and on entering the house, they saw the child with Mary, his mother. They prostrated themselves and did him homage. Then they opened their treasures and offered him gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. And having been warned in a dream not to return to Herod, they departed for their country by another way. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord.
Then they opened their treasures. If you ever lent someone something of some worth to you, you know that this can be a tricky business. And you almost certainly know why. Oh, you might be hesitant not simply because they might break whatever it is that you give them, or maybe even lose it. No, neither of those seems to be the primary reason why we might be somewhat reluctant to lend things to others which are of substantial value to us, sentimental or monetary. The main reason is very simple. We might not get that back. And that could become very frustrating. Sometimes people forget. Sometimes they turn around and lend these things out to others as if it were their own. And in rare cases, they might like what you have given them so much that they don't want to return it. And they will do everything in their power to keep it from you. And so we mention it to them, we remind them, and maybe even begin to nag them repeatedly sometimes even offering to come by and pick it up ourselves. But sometimes those things simply don't work, and the thing or things we lent disappear into a kind of black hole, never to be seen again. Well, my friends, God wants his stuff back. Then they opened their treasures. Today we gather, my friends, to celebrate the epiphany, the incredible story of the Magi from the East attempting to find the newborn king of the Jews. This is one of those stories which can be minded for all sorts of spiritual wisdom. We can talk about light and darkness, or we can talk about our journey to discover the divine and the cost and the work that it takes. We can talk about God being alive and well and at work in the hearts and minds of people outside of our group, religious, ethics, or otherwise. Or we can talk about, the stri about striving to see God in the most unlikely of places. Any of those topics could easily be a homily unto itself. But sometimes we can forget the simple, obvious messages in a story. This might be one of those times. You see, in one sense, this story shows people simply going to great lengths to give gifts to someone they feel deserves them. It really may not be much more complicated than that. Of course, the nature of each of those gifts given has symbolic significance, but we won't go into that at this time. And we, with 2,000 years of Christian thought to assist us, have the added benefit of understanding and believing in this Jesus in a somewhat more complete, more profound way as the living God visiting his people. And so the story for us in this time and place becomes a kind of template for our own spiritual lives, a story worthy of imitating, a story about an encounter between a God and his people, between a creator and the creation, between a spirit and those with whom he dwells, between a savior and those he died to save. And if that's the case, then what does God deserve? I said before that God wants his stuff back. And the most important word in that sentence is the possessive pronoun, his. You see, every good thing we have and every good thing we're able to do, every quality and skill, every kind of generous impulse, every material thing we possess and every holy thing that dwells in our hearts and minds, it all 
belongs to God. Every bit of it. And my friends, this is where our modern world has its biggest conflict. People actually believe this is my body and I can do anything I want to and with my body. It's not our body. It belongs to God. And God is simply allowing us to use it while we're here on the earth. God is simply lending it to us. And whatever it is he blesses us with comes due the second he gives it to us. Those are the terms. Will we then give back to God what is already his? You think and might think that we are sort of off the hook in that it might seem impossible to return to God what is God's. After all, where exactly do we drop these things off? Where do we take them to to return them? How does God collect what is his? I think you know the answer. Then they opened their treasure. My friends, there, of course, is only one way to give to God what God has given to us, and that is by paying these things forward to each person in need of a little kindness, for each person who needs a little mercy, a little understanding, a little generosity, a little love. By sharing with others all the good things God has given us and done for us, we are giving back to God what was his all along. Love of others is love of God. They are not separate things. That's why in scripture we also hear, if we say we love God and hate our, 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 our neighbor, we are a liar. We cannot love a God that we cannot see if we hate our brother and sister whom we can. It's not a stretch then to say that at its core, the spiritual life is nothing more than gifting to others what has been gifted to us. And so, Let's spend a lifetime opening our treasures and laying them at the feet of every person who needs to experience God and experience his great love and mercy and generosity. And that, my friends, is every single one of us. In a few moments, we'll be inviting members of our community who desire an increase awareness of God's presence in their heart by the prompting of God's spirit that will be given to them in the holy sacraments of the church. They will come forward and ask God to bless them with his presence. You, my candidates, soon to be candidates, are given a tremendous opportunity to grow, yes, in your own personal knowledge of God, to grow more closer to God in this unique time of preparation and time of prayer. But may I challenge you, in this time of preparation, you begin to also discover the way that God has blessed you uniquely on how to share your gifts, your talents, your treasures with this community of faith. What is it that God has given to you to be used to building up the people of God here at Blessed Sacrament? And for each of us, it's a reminder as we celebrate 
this great epiphany, what is it that God is calling us to share? What is it that we have in our treasure as we open it up? May we know that though we might be closing out the Christmas season this week, may it never close out our unique time of being with our Lord Jesus and then taking Jesus to a world that so desperately needs his res re revelation and his love. And how are they going to get that but for us to pay it for it, to open our treasures, and to share the Christ that dwells within us.